Good. So um, I know it's not the 8th of March, but um, the this has been um, a topic in, in my mind for a, for a long time. And uh, so women and money management. And we read a lot, we hear a lot about it. Uh, so um, uh, I think it's important to, um, to talk about it. The other reason why um, I really wanted to, um, uh, to have this, uh, this topic, I was very happy that in the, uh, in the vote, uh, I think and around two thirds of, um, uh, of those who voted, voted for it. The, um, there's, there are many organizations I, I work with who uh, get funding for women only. And uh, uh, so I think that's um, uh, important to um, uh, to see what it means and what in uh, uh, the consequences of of it. So uh, without uh, waiting, we we'll just um, start. So I you can have your your mic open actually because uh, I'm uh, curious to hear uh, about when you hear the words money management and women what what do you think what do what what is your first thought about it that they're not aware enough <laughs> okay not aware enough um i think women are only perhaps um focused on their housekeeping and the money they get, the pot of money they get, and the wider picture is not something they want to worry about. Mm -hmm. So more on the daily life and yeah. um, not so much on the kind of long-term thinking? Yeah. Okay. So, Porn, do you have any uh, anything to say? Sorry, say again, please, because yeah. here the internet a little bit problem. <laughs> uh, okay, no problem. Um, when you hear the words women and money management, what comes to your mind? Uh, it sounds like unfair that the women always carry the money and manage the money all the time for the family. <laughs> Okay, so um, yes, in, in Cambodia, my understanding and the, the experience I, I had is that uh, the ones managing the money in the family is the, uh, is the women, actually. Yeah, this Correct. one, like uh, when I heard from my mom, they say that when you carry the, the money, when the husband gives the money, you're always thinking a lot of things to managing the money. So it's very hard for the woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, so different different perspective than uh, in other um, uh, in other cultures actually. Good. So I I did a bit of research and uh, the so obviously the the most of the articles I I found or, or research are uh, in um, more towards the um, uh, the Western world. And uh, as always, uh, I think that the U.S. still dominates very much the uh, uh, all the financial education uh, scene. So when uh, so just typing in in um, uh, in a research on on internet, women and money, there are a, a few things that I uh, I found. Uh, you see, this this is a program on financial education for for women, and uh, what's interesting is that the so it's targeting entrepreneurs. And uh, they say the aim is to transform women's enterprises from fragile to resident. I am pretty sure that if the program was targeting men, they would not have used this word fragile. So this is what I call the, the preconceptions. There's a preconception that women um, uh, are not very good at managing money because they're women. And there's another program here, and I think it was yeah, funded by the uh, uh, Bill and Melinda, Melinda Gates Foundation. And, uh, and that's another trend that you see in, the, um, in, in all the topics about women and, and money uh, is the uh, uh, underlined some of the kind of keywords is so they have studied, I think, seven different countries and about what women do. Uh, with uh, with money management, so I was very hopeful uh, reading on how uh, um, uh, more information on really how uh, women deal with uh, with money on a, often on a daily basis, but also for big expenses. But actually, 
most of the study uh, is to see how these women can be brought into uh, digital financial services. So this is more uh, not really to understand more what women do, but how to market uh, better products to uh, uh, to them. And uh, another typical article, and this one dates from November 2023, is that uh, women's number one source of stress is, is money. And uh, I think that what's interesting is the, uh, the first line in the article, women have a complicated relationship with money. Um, so all these articles and, and, and studies always frame money and women as difficult and that uh, no, women are not really able. So the um, uh, the first thing is that, uh, and it, it's been, I, I don't know if you know, there's um, um, a very good book about, um, uh, re, um, the title is Pound Foolish. I don't know if you've read it. Uh, and I highly recommend the um, the ring. I'll give you the uh, the link after the uh, uh, the webinar. And um, uh, um, sorry, the, her name expects um, uh, escaped my mind for for now. I think she's called Helene Olen, I think. And she wrote. Um, uh, she really studied all the different financial education programs uh, and um, financial education counselors uh, who have been around for for a while. And she's got a specific chapter on women. And uh, there are uh, numerous uh, more serious studies, more in-depth studies about women and, and money uh, saying, well, it's, there's no real difference in, uh, in how women are able to manage money, uh, but for um, uh, certain numbers of financial uh, institutions, banks, etc., uh, women are a specific uh, target and it's always um, easier in terms of management, in terms of business, to uh, target uh, a specific segment uh, so that you can really um, uh, sell them and convince them uh, that they need your uh, your services. So a lot of the buzz around women's not being able to manage money is also because uh, the uh, that's a way of uh, attracting them to uh, financial services, specific financial services. So the the last article uh, pointed at um, um, a study done by the Fidelity Investment. So I got nothing to do with the Fidelity Investment. It's just really uh, an example. And you've got all the, the links if you want to read them. So I thought that was interesting because one, it was very uh, typical of what you can read about women and money. And the second thing is the um, um, the, the book I alluded to, um, Pound Foolish, uh, had, and it's, it was written in 2012, uh, and it pointed out at different studies, and the studies already uh, 10 years ago said exactly the same thing. So, uh, so one of the uh, the nice charts of this study, uh, the 2023 uh, uh, survey uh, did, uh, was that the uh, stress was the first word when uh, um, talking about uh, money for for women, and uh, it's uh, so they said that the dark green is women and the uh, light green is, uh, is men. So for nearly half of women, uh, stress was the uh, the first uh, word. Um, and the uh, more interestingly, you have all these different concerns that uh, women would have about a man in the, in the survey. So number one was inflation, the number two was not having enough uh, saved for emergencies. Uh, then, and that was, yeah, American. So it was um, uh, the outlook for social security or, or Medicare when I retire. Number four was the uh, earning potential for, for myself or partner. And the five was paying off debts. Um, and, the, so this one is very interesting because for me, it's not conclusive enough. Um, when you look at the, um, the number one worry, inflation and cost of living, well, there's no real difference between when men and women, actually. They rank the five, uh, th these five worries uh, exactly the same way from men to women. The only thing which is different is that 
when you add up the percentages for women, uh, they're much higher than the percentages for um, for men, uh, simply because I guess the uh, well, the math tells us that the uh, the women must have uh, answered multiple uh, I've given multiple answers uh, more than men but um, the ranking the, of their worries is exactly the same so uh, and uh, so my point there is that there's not so much difference between uh, how women and men manage money there are other differences and we're going to talk about it but in terms of um, their abilities to manage money uh, even though there's um, a huge um, um, press readings or, 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 or on the internet tell you that no, women are, are not, uh, they're more adverse to risk and so on. It's, um, uh, it's not been proven, actually. The, still in the same book, there was some an interesting studies about um, how men tend to take more risk when they invest versus uh, uh, women. And uh, the, uh, what they they don't tell you is kind of the the background. If a woman um, obviously earns less money and have fewer assets, uh, she's um, obviously uh, less keen to take risks than a man. So they don't really tell you the uh, the reason why uh, women uh, would be uh, more prudent. And uh, and some studies have have shown that. If they have the same level of assets and and uh, and income, women are take as much risk as men actually in terms of investment, for example. Um, same thing for the stress. What this this first uh, chart shows you that yeah, women seem to be more stressed. It might be that women we don't see the reasons. We just see the uh, uh, the um. The reason we, we don't see we, we don't see the reason we just see the uh, um, uh, the result. It we need to understand more about the underlying reasons and the reasons may be that uh, women earn less. Women and, yeah, and there I, I join support in women have all the responsibilities of the uh, of the daily life and so on, and then uh, it, it becomes more stressful and because they they know that it's difficult to um, pay the rent, pay the different expenses, and so on. So uh, the this kind of um, service without going into the the details of the, the reasons behind um, just um, generates um, stereotypes that women are stressed, women are uh, um, fragile, and so on. But it's um, uh, we need to understand the reasons. What was very interesting at the end of this survey uh, was that the um, they, they ask teens who they would take as role models in terms of money management and both uh, girls and boys uh, for the two-third of them uh, uh, whatever their gender said uh, mother so this is interesting because that really proves that uh, even in western cultures uh, the uh, mothers are Definitely the ones managing the money. Else, why would the uh, the teens take models onto their uh, onto their mothers? So that gives you a bit of um, uh, ideas of uh, all the stereotypes that uh, surround uh, women about money, and most of them are are fed by this kind of marketing will to target uh, uh, women because women save and women uh, can be interested uh, in an interesting uh, target for financial institutions. So let's go back to facts instead of stereotypes. The first factor, and there are differences between men and, and women, and the first fact is the, uh, the longer life expectancy. And uh, so I looked at the... Um, the World Health Organization data, and um, I think for all countries, um, and the, the data was 2019. So that's the life expectancy at birth. I, I put a few countries there. I think the apart from uh, Afghanistan, uh, where the expectancy, the life expectancy at birth is exactly the same for male and, uh, and female. Uh, in all countries, you have even in countries um, where the, the life expectancy is, is relatively low, uh, you have um, a four to five to six years gap uh, between uh, men and, uh, and women. 
And uh, I think the the biggest gap I found looking at, at the data was in Russia, uh, where the, the gap is 10 years. The uh, but in all countries you can see there's uh, there's always um, uh, more or less a five year uh, a gap, meaning that for uh, five years uh, an average women are going to uh, to outlive men, and uh, they still need money to uh, uh, to live. So that's the the very first uh, big difference between men and and women. Five years is, is long actually. The other um, difference, and um, I think it's not a surprise, is the uh, is the wage gap. So there's a very interesting study by the um, uh, International uh, Labour Organization on uh, they, they try to find out um, first how to define this uh, gender pay, uh, pay gap, which is not so obvious actually, and uh, then uh, to understand to study where it comes from, uh, why there's such a difference. So the the uh, the official definition of the of the pay gap is um, uh, calculated on the average hourly, hourly uh, earning uh, between a man and uh, and women employees. So first thing, just notice that it uh, they talk about employees and and wages. So it, it doesn't take into consideration uh, entrepreneurs, for example, and how they are uh, they pay themselves. The uh, so depending whether they take the uh, the average or uh, or the median, uh, it's between sixteen percent to twenty two uh, percent uh, lower for for women, uh, and there's there's a big range actually because in in Pakistan it seems to be the uh, the biggest uh, difference and it's thirty percent lower. Uh, so the wages for women are thirty percent lower. Than men's in Pakistan. On the other hand, surprisingly, in, in the Philippines, it's the it's the other way around. It's a country where uh, women tend to earn more than uh, uh, than men. Um, so they try to analyze where these differences came from. And uh, the first thing is that uh, there are some uh, some jobs where uh, or some some industries where where women uh, are really um, are predominant. And when uh, there's many women, they, they've noticed that uh, when these uh, jobs are really uh, done by women, that the wages tend to be to be lower. And uh, and and there are also women in and some very low earning uh, jobs so that kind of yeah, um brings the um uh, the average uh, down um and there was um a big gap they could not really um analyze as just plain discrimination and wage discrimination between uh, men and women so they they tried to really uh, analyze for the same comparable jobs and comparable education, and and uh, there were still differences uh, in most countries. So, uh, so there is a, a wage uh, discrimination. The other uh, big difference, and uh, it's why they called the uh, the motherhood pay gap, is that um, women tend to have um, interrupted career, where men tend to work from yeah. Um, Let's say twenty until uh, until they retire. Uh, most women would have uh, interrupted uh, uh, job careers. It can be when they um, uh, when they have a baby. It can be also when uh, they have to take care of the baby. So uh, um, especially in countries where there's a uh, there are not many solutions for um, uh, child minding. So all this. Um, uh, adds up to having a, a very broken uh, um, uh, career and, and income uh, over the years. And there's a third uh, cause of um, uh, well, those facts about the difference between men and women. In certain numbers of countries, uh, there are still discriminatory, discriminatory sorry, laws uh, between men and women. Um, I was very surprised. Um, for example, in uh, uh, in France, where I live, uh, we had to wait until 1965 uh, to so that women were allowed to open a bank account without their husband's or father's uh, uh, agreement, and or take a job 
without their uh, husband's or um, uh, father's agreement. So uh, it's fairly recent. Uh, there can be some yeah, differences in terms of inheritance, uh, labors, uh, labor laws to can be uh, uh, make a difference between men and, and women. So all this adds up to these um, uh, differences between uh, men and women, which are uh, not just imagination of potential ability or not, but it's really they are facts. So there's another thing too, and um, there's surprisingly, I didn't find much literature about it, but when, uh, and that's why I, I would go back to that um, uh, later, that's why the um, funding for women only is, is for me a bit problematic. Um, there's a lot uh, of literature about women's money, but in uh, uh, for many countries, the legally uh, when men and women marry uh, there's uh, oh th thank you Carrie for your remark yeah credit cards can be restricted uh, without a husband's signature wow even in Italy now wow mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so women's thanks for the uh, uh, for the comment the um, women's money is one thing men's money is one thing but there's a huge inside there's uh, uh there's a whole part of uh, uh of money and and assets which belong to both uh, uh um, husband and uh, and wife and uh so there are joint assets and obviously with joint assets come joint responsibilities the um and this is and um, i think i think Financial education programs don't insist enough about uh, about that. So obviously, uh, it depends on the countries. The country, for example, like uh, like France, it's very obvious, right? It's very clear and plain. Unless you do a specific um, wedding contract uh, by law without a contract, your uh, the income from the husband and income from the wife. Uh, are um, uh, common income, uh, so with common responsibilities. If one takes a debt, uh, the other one is responsible for paying it. So there's there's a whole part of money which is legally uh, belong to both. Uh, so obviously, when we have programs just targeting women, it's not just their women responsibility. This this money must be um, uh, managed together because they. It, it belongs to uh, to both. So issues there uh, are, uh, are numerous. If you if you don't cooperate, if you don't, uh, if there's no information sharing, uh, it, it becomes a, a problem. I've seen uh, and I've heard um, a certain numbers of, of women who, uh, when their husbands either passes away or uh, uh, leaves them. Um, are completely lost because uh, the uh, they had no idea about um, how to manage this common money. So um, they don't know where the information is. They don't know how to um, uh, uh, to fill in their tax, for example. Uh, they um, uh, if their debts, they they don't know what. what when it's to be done with these debts and so on. So that's um, uh, a huge, uh, huge problem. The other issues, uh, and I think that was uh, one thing which was um, pointed at me when uh, when I run uh, some programs in um, uh, RD uh, Congo, uh, the, uh, it, it was um, uh, very nice to hear that after we, so we have a program on, uh, on financial education for, um, uh, for couples. And uh, after the, uh, um, uh, the training, um, women and, and husband told me that oh yeah now we we talk and we don't argue anymore about money so and there are so many arguments uh, uh, that leads to uh, to really can even lead to um, uh, domestic violence because of uh, because of money because of um, decisions taken with money or some expenses done by one and, and the other doesn't agree and, and so on so I, I think there's um uh, the the lack of uh, cooperation and the the lack of money management together has tremendous consequences. Uh, I've read by I, I haven't I've read in, in some articles but it was just the press and I, I haven't seen it backed up by um, uh, proper 
um, uh, studies uh, on divorce would be one of the the main reasons for divorce would be would be money, uh, so that's uh, uh, that's a problem, and uh, and it can go and I think that's a topic which is not talked enough uh, either to uh, financial abuse. So and I'm, and I, I go more on on that. So I think. Instead of just um, focusing on on women, we we need to focus on these shared responsibilities um, also. Um, yeah, not sharing land deeds, um, bank account passwords. Yes, exactly. I've um, uh, when I am discuss with um, uh, some colleagues in uh, um, I think it was in, in Kenya mostly, uh, but they they say there was the same thing in in different um, African countries uh, when the husband passes away, and we've seen with. with the life expectancy uh, statistics uh, usually men die before uh, before women the the woman is is left usually without nothing and she cannot prove that the uh, the lands become uh, belong to her also so there are uh, horrible stories about um Women uh, who are kicked out of their house where they lived all their uh, all their lives with their husband, uh, with their late husband, or uh, cannot uh, use their land anymore because the uh, uh, usually it's the family in law uh, decides uh, by lack of deeds or by lack of uh, uh, name of the the wife's names on on the deed uh, that uh, she uh, uh, she must she must go. So she loses her husband and she loses everything with uh, uh, with him. So there are, I told you about these misconceptions because they uh, they cause problems and they're not uh, neutral actually. So the, um, uh, the first thing is that when um, when all these articles about yeah women don't manage money uh, the same way as, uh, as men are, are read by women, uh, actually they they just don't explain that women manage money differently because uh, usually their financial situation is is different, uh, and they also reinforce all these uh, misconceptions. So um, when I. I've always wondered uh, whether this um, uh, funding for women only, and I, several times I've been approached by organizations that we, we want a, a training for a financial education training, but um, only for women. And each time I kind of resist and say, no, no, bring bring men to. I mean, there's, uh, there's an issue when men and women don't talk together about um, about money and when men are not aware, for example, that they need to put their uh, wife's uh, name on their deeds, for example, and uh, that writing a will uh, is important for both. So uh, if we kind of segregate um, money management further, it just doesn't uh, it doesn't help really, uh, and it, it could even uh, widen the uh, uh, the gap uh, and. The other uh, issue is that uh, when uh, women are, are made to believe that the, um, uh, they actually are not so good at money management and uh, uh, it, it doesn't um, help with self-confidence and it does not address the, the real issues that we, uh, we saw about well, our wage gap, um, arguments and, and the, uh, uh, the, um, the longer life uh, expectancies and, and laws, discriminatory uh, laws. So um, just um, um, a few ideas of how we, we could um, uh, help and, um, uh, and bring solutions to, uh, uh, to better uh, money management um, for, uh, uh, for women. The, um, so I've, I've pointed here, the, the, for me, the, the four uh, important um, uh, issues, real issues not the women's abilities. Uh, so for the laws, uh, I think there's some, um, financial education cannot um, um, do much, but advocacy uh, can really um, help. And, um, and also campaigns to, uh, to change uh, attitude. So that the uh, the laws change, especially on access to uh, um, uh, services. And um, when, um, 
if we make a difference between men and women's access to financial services, uh, I think that's some, uh, that can be a, a problem per se also. The also the joint money, which is so money which belongs to men and, and women. I think um, there needs, uh, we, we really need to do some financial education for couples. I know that in some countries, um, it's um, uh, there are some uh, initiatives to uh, for young couples before they get married uh, to um, to learn about um, how to do a budget together. But I think it's uh, much more needs to be done on, uh, on that. It's uh, knowing the law knowing the matrimonial, matrimonial law and understanding uh, when we earn money, who does it belong, how to, uh, even practical things like um, having bills under both names or having bills with um, uh, at least one bill with um, the uh, one spouse's name and the other bill with the other spouse's name, things like that, so that uh, the uh, uh, in practical life we always have all the uh, uh, the proofs of identity or proofs of um, of um, uh, of address uh, with uh, uh, for both spouses. Um, so it goes from really practical things like that to uh, how to deal with different um, spending style. Because usually um, spouses have learned about money management from uh, from their family uh, and also from their uh, uh, their behavior. Uh, so some are more um, uh, thrifty, some are more uh, spending, and doesn't actually doesn't come from the from the gender. Some men are very uh, like spending and uh, and some like saving and, and same thing for for, for women. Um, so um, but having two different spending styles or different attitudes uh, uh, towards money can create lots of uh, issues in the in the family, in the couple. So uh, it's good to be able to talk about it, to recognize it. And uh, I think really need more needs to be done on uh, on financial education specific for couples um, and also before uh, financial education before big like big moments in our, uh, in lives before uh, buying a first house for example understanding that uh, um, yeah the, the two names need to be put on the um uh, on the uh, on the property uh, deed and and so on. So uh, there there are things to uh, to be done in this um uh, in this field. Financial abuse uh, is uh, a big big concern, and unfortunately, it usually uh, concerns uh, women more than uh, than men. So the um, um, when I talk about financial abuse, I talk about um, uh, abusive relationships. And there's a financial side of it. So it's going to be, uh, for example, a, a man who um, doesn't let uh, um, uh, a woman spend as she as she wants. She he takes, for example, the uh, uh, her her debit card or asks all uh, her income to um, uh, to be transferred to his uh, account under his name, and. Um, so there's, um, it's kind of a, of a pattern, and I think it's been um, well studied in terms of uh, abusive relationship. Uh, the financial part is important to make the uh, the victim really completely um, powerless and uh, less likely to to leave the abuser because uh, she's got uh, she's got nothing. She's um, uh, she um, uh, she loses all her money and all her means to uh, uh, to leave the uh, uh, the abuser and uh, and live uh, independently. So this um, this is a problem. This is um, uh, a big uh, a big problem. And uh, there's uh, we need to have yeah, more prevention campaigns on uh, on that and and signals. Things that uh, the um, when your, uh, um, your friend, your uh, boyfriend, or uh, husband uh, ask you for all your money to be uh, transferred to his account, that's a signal. It's it's not normal. 
and I think that's uh, uh, we really need more campaign on uh, on that to uh, uh, to prevent uh, such cases of, uh, of financial uh, abuse. The last one, uh, the motherhood uh, gap, is definitely uh, much more yeah, delicate and difficult to uh, uh, to tackle with. The um, I think we uh, we need to uh, one talk about it so that people are, are really aware that there's there's a, a, a difference in financial destinies between men and women because um, a, a woman is going to be more likely to stop earning money several times in uh, in her life uh, versus men who who usually uh, earn on a on a constant uh, numbers of uh, of years. Um, women should have more choices. Some women want to uh, to keep working, uh, but uh, maybe there's no childcare, uh, or there's some um, uh, the 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 working hours offered for a, a, a woman with a the small child are, are really difficult to to tackle with. So uh, the, the there need to be more choices uh, for women. On the other hand, some women. Um, prefer not to um, uh, to stop working for a while to uh, take care of their children. Some men uh, also would like to take care more of their children, but the usually the, the financial constraint is uh, is there and they cannot do it. So uh, so I think we uh, there's all kinds of different choices, individual choices or family choi choices um, that can be done. And and um, most of the time, it, it's very rare that um, people can uh, choose to do that, to do what they they would like to for for them, for the the well being of their children, uh, because uh, of financial constraints and lack of choice. So I think we, as a society, we, we need to really push for um, uh, more choices, and uh, it's it's not just the. The, the mother's career, which is important too, it's uh, it's important to hear the uh, the children's uh, voices. So, uh, and 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 think about the the child well-being. So, I like to focus more on the uh, uh, on these two um, uh, aspects of differences between men and women's financial situation. So, in terms of yeah, financial education uh, for couples. Uh, and matrimonial laws, as I, as I put it, we, we should all know what it entails. And as a summary, we don't need to uh, to be lawyers, but at least to understand really what uh, uh, what it means. And uh, the communication we have um uh, in one of our training on uh, on this specific topic, we have um, um a communication uh, uh, exercise on. Uh, uh, facts and uh, judgment so we we have there are different sentences in a, in a dialogue between um, uh, two spouses and we uh, the the participants need to sort out what is uh, judgmental and what is uh, real fact and and uh, we can have a full training actually on communication about money uh, it's uh, money is very specific actually because it can be it's at the same time factual but also very emotional and uh, so people uh, tend to think that their money is kind of part of themselves. So if we, we uh, uh, um, uh, do something with their money, they, they feel um, uh, um, uh, aggressed um, directly. So I, I think it, this because of this specificity, it's very important to, uh, 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 to learn how to communicate about money. Um, simple things too, but very important about who pays what in the family, and uh, especially when there's a, a wage gap and one is earning more than than the other, it's uh, it's important to to do that, and uh, um, obviously budget and setting priorities together. How to do a budget together, uh, information sharing, and uh, where are the papers. And uh, that's, uh, uh, as I pointed out, when uh, uh, the um, one of the spouses, um, usually the, the husband, passes away, and uh, that's always a, a big, uh, uh, a big, big issue because uh, some wives have, have absolutely no idea where the, the papers are. Names on assets and, uh, and wills. I think it's, uh, uh, and that's where also. Uh, 
training for women only is, is can be problematic because men uh, need to do their uh, their part. And uh, for example, um, they if for example the um, the deed is only at one name, uh, you can do whatever. How many hours of financial education for for women? At some point, uh, it won't change the fact that some of the deeds are only. Uh, on uh, a man's name. So uh, you need to have the, the man's uh, brought to the uh, training room to, to explain and can be through education, but it can be also through awareness campaigns that, yeah, if you really yeah, love your life, your, your wife, just yeah, um, prepare for the time when you, uh, uh, you won't be there anymore. And uh, and she'll be uh, uh, she'll be alone to um, uh, to tackle all that. So I, I hear sometimes some some men say, "Okay, no, don't, don't worry, I, I I do that." And uh, thinking it's like um, doing a favor to the woman, it's doing an absolutely not a favor at all because then the uh, the woman cannot do it if she has to do it by herself. So um, it's important that men, even with the, the very good will uh, and good intention, need to uh, to be aware that uh, sharing the responsibility and, and the tasks and the work uh, is very, very important. On the the motherhood uh, gap, so uh, as I said, it's um, uh, more choices. It can be childcare uh, within the companies or childcare, but more childcare available uh, at affordable uh, uh, costs uh, somewhere else. Uh, flexible work, uh, um, also so that the um, uh, the children are not uh, left for yeah, ten hours um, uh, outside the uh, the home. Retirement plans to um, designed usually to um, for employees who work all their life, and the uh, and there's a real penalty in retirement plans uh, because of the um, motherhood uh, gaps. So um, I mean, it's it's a question of yeah, politics and society's choice to uh, to allow uh, to change the the plan so that the um, uh, these uh, gaps are um, uh, taken care of. And uh, and and couples should have the the choice to really uh, think about all the consequences of um, uh, of their choice, and and very often because of financial constraints, because uh, there are so many expenses to pay, for example, uh, or because of retirement uh, savings, because the uh, uh, of the the worry for retirement, um, the children are systematically put into uh, childcare. And uh, and that can be um, a problem for the children. I think we we don't hear enough the um, uh, the voice of the children uh, uh, being yeah, uh, woken up at um, uh, six a.m. being ta being taken to um, a, a childminder and then up to uh, 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 late in the evening and then go back. I mean, there are um, society consequences uh, uh, on children. So I think uh, all all aspects should be uh, considered, and uh, to me sometimes there's a bit of um, um when you try to map all the all the flows, uh, it's some um, some of it seems to be a bit um, absurd. Uh, when you have, um, for example, uh, women who um, because um, they uh, they are afraid that the, the retirement is not going to be enough and they need to earn money because that's the only way to secure uh, retirement. So they're going to um, leave their baby very early on at a childminder and the uh, the women is going to save and invest in this retirement, and these savings actually are uh, for uh, companies. Uh, and it's like, wait a minute, where, where is the child's well-being in, uh, in in that? And um, so actually, the quality time you can spend with a with a baby and all the kind of the the bond that you uh, you create with a baby very early on, uh, you you earn money to give yeah part of it uh, to a child minder and then a big part of it to uh, savings for uh, retirement to yeah, big companies and now uh, you can have yeah some agents taking a a, a fee uh, also on the uh, 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 every year it's like 
is um is just financial flows but what what about the uh, uh yeah the, the well-being of uh, of everyone in uh, in that it's not considered enough so i think it's um we shouldn't have our lives um, financialized too much. To uh, 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 I think, so um, these are some yeah reflections on uh, uh, women and uh, uh, and many. Um, it's um, uh, so I'd be um, very happy to um, open the uh, the mics and uh, um, have your uh, of your views on this uh, on these issues. Uh, maybe yeah. Other issues I've um, uh, I've uh, uh, overlooked. Um, to answer uh, Razia's uh, remark on the, on the women, um, uh, or I was maybe Kerry's remark, sorry, and women's not aware enough. Uh, it's uh, that's interesting because when I read the, the different articles, it seems that uh, ten years ago, yeah, that there was. Um, Women were not really aware, but it seems that there's more and more awareness on. Uh, uh, so things are changing for the uh, for the good. Probably for uh, all the uh, the training that you've done also. So what what um I've got yeah other ideas or. Um... Where's my little thing? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Carrie. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, first off, Sophie, well done on the research, on the backup for the comments. You know that there are so many agencies that are trying to look at this, taking the surveys, and really kind of backing up what you, you as a trainer have probably found out there in the field as it was, right? I don't, probably in the articles, you didn't find anything of a surprise. I mean, given the countries and every every place that you've worked in. So it's really nice to have all of this so organized and so just bang, 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 bang. Um, I I like the idea that um, um, you start out, you know, where do we, that our mothers, that our mothers are so important. So when you first asked that question, it was very interesting that the first thing that popped into my mind was my mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the idea that my uh, uh, we're looking at a post-war American couple, you know, when uh, the economy was on the boom and there was money and my father was a businessman with his brothers and, you know, oh, my gosh, the arguments, the, the tensions, the this and that, that were in the family, you know, as we were growing up. And my mother, I didn't know this till much later. My mother instinctively knew to hide money. So from whatever was, she really tried carefully on the on the grocery shopping, you know, to make sure there was a little left over, and that became her her private stash, so to speak. But unfortunately, later in life, then when my father would run into trouble in his business, he would demand, he would force her even sometimes physically, to give that money to him. And, of course, he then would either pay debts or he would lose it or take another risk with it or whatever. So um, I uh, I didn't grow up with very good money habits in front of me from parents and um, society. It was uh, – my father was a bit of a, of a spendthrift. You know, so it is it's, – it's crucial what we – what we grow up with. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, I have a niece who my sister, the husband walked out from one day to the next. And um, the niece knew that I was involved in financial literacy training. And she uh, studied finance and economics and kept her nose to the ground. And she's now very high up, very high up in Vanguard and um, and is, uh, is a shark. I mean, she just... She saw what it had done to her mother, you know. So, uh, again, you know, our personal things that happen to us are so important in terms of what we do. But you have to live in a society where you've got some opportunity. I mean, I, you know, some of these countries, there's not a lot of opportunity except home businesses, um, selling chickens, eggs, weaving, tailoring, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So... All of these things are, are very 
I mean, you just, it's right on the button, uh, Sophie. And uh, Razia, have you got any, any first thoughts? No, I think it's it's um, wonderful research put all into, you know, one what 45 minute uh, webinar. And I think it's a real eye opener for women to look at this. I think women culturally in many countries find it difficult to advocate. And it's the very countries that need it. You know, for Pakistan, KV, India, Pakistan come to mind. And I can't see those women speaking for themselves. Um, I think educating men and women together is important. So men understand that women are actually an asset if they're involved in the financial literacy of the family, the financial management of the family, rather than feel threatened by sharing information. I think that's an important uh, cultural shift that needs to happen. Um, I can't see it happening in the <laughs> near future, but um, we we live in hope. Yeah, it's um, um just to um, uh, echo that in um in Congo in uh, in the uh, uh, Congo we we had a training, and uh, so with men and women, and at some point men started realizing that oh um women spent a lot that's why they, they they say that at first in terms of all the uh, uh the preconceptions that they had about their their wives and so they spend a lot and they um uh, by kind of yeah, inversing the roles and uh, having them uh list uh, all what uh, uh the women told them what they they spent and uh, men started realizing how expensive food was and they had never realized that before because they, they don't know. I mean, it's not just bad intention. It's just they don't go shopping. They don't do the, the daily grocery. So they had not realized that in the market, things were so expensive. They just saw the other uh, food on the table and, uh, and then they started realizing. So really just simple communication is uh, and and sharing the information because my my experience that in um in most countries uh, women do manage money and that's why i was very uh, happily surprised by the uh, uh, the numbers of teens that uh, look at their women uh, their uh, mothers to uh, uh, about uh, money management in uh, even when the law is adverse, even if the the husband, as you as you uh, uh, told us, uh, Carrie can be a, yeah, very different views on on money. Uh, wives do, um, uh, mothers do manage the uh, uh, the money. So uh, I think that's uh, that's very uh, uh, very important to have this communication uh, so that it's teams work. It's not uh, just women uh, doing their th things on their side and, and, and men uh, is taking other decisions on the on, on the other side. So, uh, uh, and the in all the financial education programs I've been to, I've never heard about uh, the uh, matrimonial law and what it entails uh, on this kind of joint uh, money for uh, for families. So that's one thing. I read an, an article, very very interesting article yesterday. In um, uh, so it's it's about France, but I guess these kind of trends can uh, can exist also in in other countries. Um, in in France, um, the uh, there's a, a huge proportion of of poor who are actually uh, um, mothers alone and uh, it's something that one uh, one quarter of children are raised in uh, in families where the uh, uh, the the mother is alone and it has yeah tremendous consequences because nothing in in the law or in the social services are tailored to that uh, so um so women usually they um uh, have uh, so the, the the help from the ex-husband is usually i think it was um paid the, the uh, um uh, i don't know how you call it in in english but the, the money that the um the father must give to the uh, uh to the child after um, a, a divorce in 90 
percent of the cases is not given so that the mother has to uh, cope with uh, difficult hours, um, low income jobs. And uh, so the uh, a huge pocket of poverty uh, comes from these um, uh, uh, women uh, alone. So uh, that's um, that's a huge problem, uh, and uh, I think it's coming out of the of the radars of of uh, of politicians, and uh, and it should be because uh, uh, it really it's going to do um, uh, intergeneration poverty uh, 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 a circle. So. Uh, so, Paul, do you have yeah, but, other? But, yeah, uh, yes, sorry, Kevin, yeah. I, I think I think that's a, a a problem in all countries, and I mean, from what I know from the United States, uh, uh, the men will do anything, anything, not to pay the the uh, the child support. Now, first off, they don't want to pay the alimony either, you know. But the the business about the child support, they just um, again. I mean, I watched my sister, and she finally just gave up. Because the thing is, it costs you more in trying to pursue it through a life. Uh, uh, and then what happens is the guy gives up his job. So he says, oh, I don't have any income anyway. I, you know? I, I saw you that know? too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is that I think, I think there's a, a horribly deep psychological aspect to all of this. And um, because it's in all countries. I mean, it's in all countries, and uh, it has something to do with money and stuff and, you know, not taking care of each other, uh, the pressures that we're under in the kind of society that we're now in. And, you know, I know that when uh, I was giving the training face-to-face -face in Pakistan, it's also very embarrassing. These very high people in the bank would come and say, on a, on a coffee break, or on a lunchtime so that nobody else could hear, oh, you, you just outlined the story that happened to my family. You know, my father died. He didn't tell us anything. We went down into poverty. So, um, you know, the thing is that I don't, I don't have trust in the fact that the people who make the laws and think about it actually have any compassion hmm. for what it's like to be a single thrown away mother with a couple of kids and no birth control. So you might have another one. And now in the United States with no abortion, you know, so you just keep having, I, I, I have to admit, I feel a little despondent about, about it. Um, I do know that when, when Rosie and I are able to give our classes that, you know, there is an awakening um, of a, you know, an, Oh, and, you know, people do, see where they might be frittering away some money that they don't need to be, you know, that they, they could be saving. Um, but I just, I think there's something in humanity that there is a big problem. <laughs> and, and that's why also I think that the, um, yeah, thank you for your remarks. We fully agree with that. With that. that that's why I think that uh, the, the way financial education uh, has started and uh, has, been, has been designed so far, really insisting on, on things like yeah, needs and wants and um, paying debts. It's, I mean, it's been designed most of it by, um, uh, by banks and uh, microcredit institutions and it kind of uh, it's in a me for, for me needs and wants are, are really childish compared to the the real things at stake which are yeah mothers uh, left alone with uh, tremendous expenses to to pay and and kids to to raise and uh or um husband and wives uh, together but not managing money together at all i mean these are real issues and uh, i mean needs and wants is yeah it's, it's like little icing on the cake but it's it's uh they're, they're really more serious stuff than uh, than that um, um so so Paul, did you want to, to um share uh, your um uh, your views from from cambodia um yeah um uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for the course today. It's very good for the research. And also, you know, like, um, also Friend International, we just only provide the training, uh, money management, uh, to the family. And also, we just only find out that uh, normally when we provide the training, just only female, they join the training. And mentality that even the, Money management focus on 
every expense and also if they have a loan, the husband never involved, just only the female. So that's why they are very stress, stressful. And also when we just only explain them very well about like like Sophia said about need and want to make the female uh, she just only thinking, oh, this one is very important. But the husband, they never think about that. Yeah. So so we can see that the gap is so far different between men and women, and women have a lot of things to do. But now in Cambodia, we can see like a, a, a new generation, uh, they just only more understanding before men, male and female, when they are married together, they are more understanding about how to manage the money and also how they can be supporting each other. Yeah, but it's just only but this one like some level of the how can we say the the some family when they have high education it it's okay. But just only some uh people they are in community in low education, it's quite hard for them. They also sometimes uh how can we say the the, the the they have the problem in each other about the financial yeah because of the men they don't have to uh, involve much about the money management yeah they just only focus to the women mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that, that's why i think funding thank you very much so i think that that's why yeah. funding uh when the uh the funders really require that the uh, uh it's women only attending the training for me it's it's a big issue men should be really yeah. uh, involved I, I think i read something even though it's a bit, bit different on there uh, um uh, violence uh, uh against women there was um, an experiment done in in africa and actually uh, for years and years they did training only for women and then they started training men and the violence uh, starting really reducing so uh, in in a way it's uh, uh, there are similar things with them um, uh, with financial education uh, women should uh, we should stop telling women that oh yeah and you you're not so good at money management you should attend training no it's uh, 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 there are facts as I told you and let's get together in in training and understand how to manage money together and uh, I think in, in in we'll do more progress on that on that side um it's uh it's more than time then uh, i i thank you very much for your uh, for your remark obviously if you are uh, if you want to have uh, if you have questions or, or remarks uh, after the, uh, the uh, this webinar just yeah uh, go ahead and, and send me uh, an email i will uh, also send you the, the link to the recording that you can share to your uh, uh, to your colleagues and uh, thank you very much for uh, for attending and uh, as uh, as usual, I send you um, also in about a month's time a, a link to with a choice of uh, two topics for our next webinar, and you, you'll tell me what uh, what you prefer. Thanks to you, uh, and um, uh, see you very soon. <laughs>